Hello, Victor Tay here from the church in Liverpool. This Sunday I preached on Ephesians chapter 2, and the main theme of this chapter is implications of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So there are four things that are touched on in this chapter. The first one is through Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, we are quickened from the dead. We are made alive again. So we know we're body, soul, and spirit. You know, we're born spiritually alive, but when we are reach that age of accountability, sin revives and our spirit dies. But if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll be born again. Our spirit will be made alive. Now, some people try and use these passages to teach that we are dead in the sense that we cannot even put our faith on Jesus Christ. So that's something I debunk in this sermon. Number two, Jesus Christ's death, burial and resurrection is a display of God's love mercy and his grace and this is really the context in which these beautiful passages that we use for soul winning ephesians 2 8 and 9 for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast really appear because it's talking about christ dying for the ungodly christ dying for those who are dead in trespasses and sins christ dying for those that were god's enemies and yet even in that context jesus christ died for us and, and rose again and offered us, you know, a new life, a new beginning. Um, and that really shows, you know, God's love and his grace and his mercy towards people that did not deserve it. And this is what grace is. It's an unmerited favor. Number three is through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ abolished these ordinances that were required to become part of God's people. So there's this theme in Ephesians chapter 2 of the Jews and the Gentiles, and the Gentiles being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. But because Jesus Christ has abolished these ordinances, we're complete in him, and now we are part of the nation of God and of the house of God. And there's no longer a need to keep circumcision and the Passover and the Sabbaths and these holy days. He's abolished that enmity between man and God by dying on the cross. And lastly, number four, because he has abolished these ordinances, there is now one nation. He's made these Jew and Gentile one nation, one house of God. So it's no longer about a physical nation or a physical temple it is now a spiritual nation and a spiritual temple. And those of us in Christ Jesus are the true spiritual Jews and the true spiritual Israel and true nation of God to which flow the promises from, you know, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So in conclusion, you know, hey, thank God for the grace of God through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, this ought to motivate us to, you know, live, you know, not continue in sin, that grace may abound. Now, will grace abound if we continue in sin? Yes. But, you know, just like Ephesians 2.10 teaches that we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. So the grace of God should motivate us to want to serve God. And lastly, you know, we need to realize that our real identity is in Jesus Christ. We are Christians first and foremost. You know, so first and foremost, it should not be our physical citizenship, not sh shouldn't be our physical descent. We are first and foremost Christians. So if you want to hear the whole sermon, there'll be a link to it in the description and on the end screen. If you want to learn more about our church, you can visit our website, tcil.org.au. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting us and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.